Hey everyone, in this video, we're building up the littlest offering in the Poseidon lineup, the new 12 inch Sprout balance bike. Now it's a pretty straightforward build, but there are a couple of key steps that you don't wanna overlook so that you can ensure the safety of your little one. Okay, so we can go ahead and open up the box and pull out the bike. Now it's all packaged up together and it's the only thing in the box and there aren't any manuals or parts boxes that you need to be looking for. Now you're not gonna need that many tools, but you will need a few. Now you're definitely gonna want some wire cutters to cut all the zip ties. And then you're also gonna need a couple of Allen wrenches, a four millimeter and a five millimeter specific. Now, ideally, you would also have a torque wrench with a four millimeter and a five millimeter Allen bit, just to make sure that we're getting all of our bolts tightened to the proper specification. Now, in this case, because we've got an all metal bike with all metal components, it's not as critical, but it's highly recommended. And then of course, lastly, you're gonna need a bike pump to inflate the tires. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is to grab a pair of cutters and to remove all of the packaging. Now, there's gonna be a lot of zip ties on here, so things packaged up really well. Just take your time and be sure not to scratch the paint as you cut through all these zip ties. Now you might notice that to save space in packaging, they turn the front wheel facing backwards. It's a little bit more compact that way. First thing you wanna do is to go ahead and just spin that around. You just wanna make sure that the fork is raked out forward. And you also notice that the stem is facing forward as well. You wanna see these four handlebar mounting bolts pointing to the front of the bike. Next, you wanna grab a four millimeter Allen wrench and just remove all four of the faceplate bolts. Or if you kind of want to cheat, you can try and keep all four of the bolts in the faceplate. Makes it a little bit quicker, but sometimes it's hard to keep all four of the bolts kind of going where you want them to. Okay, so I've got the faceplate off. All four bolts are still in it. I'm going to grab the handlebars. Now the handlebars are directional. And if you look from the top, you'll see that there's a slight sweep to the handlebars. Now the bar should be sweeping back towards the rider. Now these are what's called a riser bar. So when you're looking at the handlebar from the front, you'll notice that there's a slight rise to the handlebars. And we're gonna install the handlebar by placing it into the open stem, grabbing the faceplate with all four bolts, doing your best to hold it in place while we get all four of the bolts started. Just a few threads on each bolt is all you need to get it started. Now, once all four bolts are started, you can go ahead and start to tighten them down incrementally, but also keep in mind that you wanna keep an equal gap between the stem faceplate and the base of the stem above and below the handlebars. So once the bolts start to get cinched down, you can kind of position the handlebars where you like. So we'll rotate them back up again so that the rise is facing up. Now there's no center line on these handlebars, but there is a little window in the stem faceplate. And you can also see that there's a knurled section on the handlebar. And so just do your best to center the handlebar laterally. You don't wanna be seeing any of the knurled section protruding from either side of that stem faceplate. So that's looking pretty good there. Now you might be asking yourself, how tight should you make the handlebars? Really the only way to properly do this is with a torque wrench and you're gonna aim for about four to five Newton meters per bolt on the stem faceplate. Now the handlebars are actually the only thing you have to attach to the bike, but there are a few more things that you wanna do before you head out for the first time. Now first is you just wanna double check that the wheels are on tight. So you're just gonna use a five millimeter Allen wrench and just check each of the four axle bolts just to make sure that they're tight. Now these should be tight from the factory, but it never hurts just to double check. Now you also wanna just double check that the stem pinch bolts are tight. That's these two bolts that are sort of on opposing sides of the stem near the top. It's also gonna be a five millimeter Allen wrench. And something else you wanna check is to make sure that the headset is also tight. Now the headset is just a set of bearings in the head tube that allows the handlebars to turn. If you find that there's any play in that headset, meaning the fork can move with respect to the frame, you definitely wanna have that tightened down. And conversely, if you find that there's some excessive force required to turn the handlebars, that means that the headset's a little bit too tight and you're gonna to wanna to loosen it a little bit. Now generally from the factory, the headset preload comes pretty much dialed in, but it's just something to check as well. Now we also wanna make sure that the tires are inflated to the proper pressure. So to do that, it's easiest to just flip the bike over and have the, well, what would be the drive side, or in other words, the right-hand side of the bike facing towards you, because you'll notice that the valves on these little 12 inch wheels are actually angled valves, which means that the valves point outward to one side of the bike. And really that's a nice touch from Poseidon here because with straight valves on these little 12 inch wheels, it's almost impossible to get the pump head onto the inner tube to inflate the tire. So I'm just gonna grab my pump here and just make sure we are inflated to the proper pressure, which you can find on the sidewall. You're just gonna remove the valve cap, it's a plastic cap, put the pump head on and lock it in place. 
So we're almost done, but the last thing you wanna do is to adjust the saddle height. Now to adjust the saddle height, you're gonna use again a five millimeter Allen wrench and the pinch bolt is right here at the seat post collar. It's a single bolt, you're just gonna loosen it a little bit and that will allow you to slide the seat up and down. Now the seat goes really low and I recommend starting it at its lowest position and then you can just raise it incrementally as your child gets more comfortable maneuvering the bike. Now when you're tightening the seat post collar, you just wanna make sure that it's rotated such that the slot in the seat post collar matches up with the slot in the frame seat tube. You also wanna make sure that the seat is pointed straight and once it's at your desired height, you can go ahead and cinch that down. Now again, ideally you're aiming for four to five Newton meters of torque. Now if you've got a torque wrench, again, this is the best way to ensure that you have the proper clamping force on the seat post. All right, well, that's basically it for this really simple build. Now the last thing that you wanna do is just to make sure that your child has a well-fitting helmet. But other than that, there's not much more to it. I hope you found the video helpful, but if you have any questions, just let us know down in the comments. Thanks for watching and enjoy the ride.